yes we have studied first of all we have studied what is the theory of firm right like managerial economics only talks about that if a firm or uh, you know if an if a business enterprise enters the market then first of all why it enters the market secondly when it enters the market then what are the various economic phenomena by which it is influenced okay in that context we have studied various points like yes we have talked about demand we have talked about supply and of course we have talked about elasticity of demand okay and we have also discussed about the that's right the production function and the cost function now since all these functions whether it is related to demand or whether it is related to production and costs since they are not constant that is why we have assigned certain probabilities to it and we have come up with the concept of risk when the, there is a probability that whatever is uh, the actual outcome that is not going to be the uh, expected outcome when there is a difference in probability or yes uncertainty related to that then we uh, then there is another concept which arises and that is a concept of risk okay now all these all these aspects of the economic phenomena they are present in the whole economy and each and every firm is affected and influenced by these phenomena all right so when we are actually talking about all the firms together what we are talking about is at a very macro level and hence for the purpose of managerial uh, managerial decision making there is one more aspect which is important and that is known as macroeconomics right now what do you mean by the word macro just like micro the word micro means small or minute or little or we can say part by part in microeconomics we study each and every firm all the economic pheno phenomena which one firm is going to be influenced by but at this but then all these uh, economic phenomena they affect all the firms in the economy so when we study the influence of all economic phenomena on all the firms what we are doing is studying it at a at a bigger level and that level is known as the macro level okay so what is macroeconomics all about macroeconomics is nothing but study of various economic phenomena at the macro level or at a bigger level at the level of the whole economy or at the level of the whole country okay now if you remember that in the first lecture we had seen we had uh, gone for an industrial visit to ongc right and then over there we tried to answer the three basic questions of economics what are the three basic questions of economics how to produce how to produce and for whom to produce what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce okay now if in if at the level of the country or at the level of the economy if we are discussing these questions then the same questions will apply to the whole country also and hence they become the subject matter of macroeconomics also right now when we talk of macroeconomics now if we see what are the various economic conditions in particular in a market in which we are or we could we could be competing these are the various economic conditions we are talking about market structures we are talking about supply and demand conditions we are talking about technology government regulation international dimensions future conditions and various macroeconomic conditions okay now when we deal with the aggregate of various sectors and agents separating them within the economy then actually we are dealing with macroeconomists now macroeconomists just like 
at the micro level, they are concerned with these questions that is how to explain short term economic fl fluctuations that are manifested in the movements of output and employment and, the, and how the government should uh, uh, how the government should respond to these fluctuations through monetary and fiscal policy responses. Okay? Now, if you see, there are three perspectives which are discussed by macroeconomics. One is the long term perspective, other is the medium term perspective, and the third one is the short term perspective. Okay. Now, if we see the uh, long term perspective, then at that time the capital which is there or the technology which is existing in the country that is taken to be, uh, that, is, that is taken into consideration. For example, we have talked about various capital budgeting models okay? or we have talked about various capital budgeting decisions. Now, in capital budgeting, what do we discuss about? the entire investment which is done by the company in the plant and the machinery for example or any long term project which is going to give uh, return right so what do we do we disc we talk about the cash outflows as well as the cash inflows all right so if we see in the long term in the long term we are discussing about the uh, capital accumulation and the improvements in technology in the long term whereas when we talk in the medium term in the long term we talk about capital accumulation and improvements in technology whereas when we talk in medium term in medium term, we are talking about the stock of capital <coughs> and technology. Here, in the medium term, we regard capital and technology to be constant. Okay? Whereas, in the long term, we are talking about accumulation of capital. That, that means in the long term, there is always a possibility that the company or the business enterprise, they can increase their capital which they have. Okay? They might come up with an IPO or they might go for uh, you know, certain uh, corporate debentures, etc. And they can increase their capital. Whereas in the medium term, the stock of capital is taken to be constant. Okay? Now this stock of capital is going to be used in a certain way at a certain point of time all right it is going to be invested in the form of plant and machinery in the company at that point of time so in order to maximize the profits or in order to optimize the use of the scarce resources which are available with the company what the company will have to do that the company takes into consideration in the medium term whereas when we talk about short term we are talking about the oscillations in demand and supply. Okay? In the short term, the company or the firm is providing certain output. Now, this output, what output and how much output it will be, it will depend upon what is the market share of the company. What is the, uh, who are the consumers of the firm and what is the demand from their side. Okay? At the same time, it will also be talking about supply. That is, what is the level of utilization, what is the capacity of the firm and accordingly how it is satisfying the demand which is there in the market. Okay? These oscillations or these short term fluctuations that we say, these give rise to a phenomenon in economics which are known as business cycles all right these oscillations in the short run in the demand and supply they lead to certain fluctuations okay and these fluctuations are nothing but alternating phases of contraction and expansion all right they are alternating phases of contraction and expansion this phenomena is known as the phenomena of business cycles okay so each and every firm 
goes through this alternating phases of contraction and expansion and every firm has to go through a business cycle. All right. So, as a student of managerial economics, it is important for us to know that how this business cycle is going to affect our business, how this business cycle is going to influence our firm and accordingly what decision has to be made at what point of time. All right. Now, let us try to understand what do we mean by this business cycles. Now, when the economy trends to grow and then contract alternatively, it is known as a business cycle. These are the various features of a business cycle. We will come to that later on. Let us see how a business cycle looks like. This is how a business cycle looks like. Okay? You can see that there are two alternating phases. One there is contraction, one there is expansion and then there is contraction. Okay? What do you mean by an expansion? Yes. What do you mean by an expansion? Expand. To expand means to? Grow. To grow. Exactly. Expansion means growth. Okay. So, this business cycle is between two economic variables, one being output and the other being time. Right? So, on a time scale, when we are trying to find out whether the output is expanding or it is contracting, then we are in a business cycle. Okay? So, you will see that there are two phases in a business cycle. One is a phase of expansion and second, there is a phase of contraction. We can also say that it has got four sequences. The, what are those four sequences that you can see? If we start from the peak, then we will see that peak is the top point. If we start from here, this is the peak and when it falls, it is known as a downturn. It is known as a downturn. This is a trough, okay? And this is an upturn or a recovery. Okay, so you can see that every business cycle, this is one business cycle, right? In every business cycle, there are two phases, right? This is a phase of expansion, this is a phase of contraction, okay? This top point is known as the peak or it is also known as the boom, okay? It is a point at which the output is maximum. In that particular time frame, what is the maximum output or what is the point of maximum output? That is known as the boom or it is known as the peak. Okay? Now, what do we mean over here by output? When we say that at peak there is maximum output, then what is this maximum output of? Maximum output of? Yes, maximum output of production. Okay, so uh, this production can be defined in various ways. This production can also be called income. Okay, so it is basically income to various factors of production. Okay, so income to land that is rent that is maximum, income to labor that is wage that is maximum. Okay, income to machinery that is the number of units that is production that is maximum and income to the entrepreneur that is profit that is also maximum okay so at the point of peak everything is maximum okay it is most optimum at that time maximum production maximum rent maximum wage and maximum profit okay this after the boom what we see that since it is an alternating phase, it is said that whatever goes up will have to come down. All right. So we see that after reaching the peak level, the uh, there is a fall in the economic or in the business cycle, and this is known as the downturn. It is known as downturn. Okay. It will keep on going down depending upon what is the situation of various economic variables and it will reach a 
it will reach a point or we, we can say a peak at the bottom and that is known and this whole thing is known as a trough okay now when this downturn is sustained and for a very long period of time then it is known as recession now recession is the period which was going on in the year 2008 in the year 2007-8 we saw when there was the subprime crisis and the whole world whole world's economy every country's economy had gone through a spiral and that was that originated in the us okay it was because of the subprime crisis of us okay so rushab what is the example of a, a recession the subprime crisis in the us okay which affected the economies of all of the whole of the world okay now what was its impact uh, on india it was not major why why because <laughs> india's economic condition was very stable at that time very good uh, why was it stable ma'am because due to our special people in government <laughs> special people what are these special people in the government <laughs> called who uh, who uh, you know Our yes, the finance ministers as well as economic advisers, they were able to actually hold the reins. RBI. Otherwise, RBI. Otherwise, the economy uh, and the economic phenomenon is like a wild horse. Okay, once it starts running and once it starts galloping, you don't know how fast it will run and where it is going to stop. right so whoever were our finance ministers economic advisers as well as the rules and regulations uh, which are which were imposed by the central bank that is rbi that the whole thing had a lot of control on whatever the economy was facing and that is why the influence of the subprime crisis